The good news is you have decided you want to be a romance writer, which last time I checked is still one of the number one best-selling genres in the world. So you got that going for you. Now, the second choice you need to make is what type of romance book do you want to write? Because there are many different options within there. So today we're just going to talk about subgenres. Now, do not confuse subgenres with tropes. So a subgenre would be young adult, paranormal, science fiction. A trope would be a uh, cheating husband, a second chance romance. Those are tropes that is very different than subgenres. So we're just going to talk today all about subgenres and we're going to help you pick a subgenre that you want to write in. And don't worry that you have to pick one genre and that means you can never write the others, but you got to start somewhere. So let's just pick one, get started in there, and then we can start exploring the other subgenres for your next book. I'm Lisa, best-selling co-author of the Snow and Her Seven Seals series, and on this channel I talk about all things romance writing related. So if this sounds like you or something you might be interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. I post new videos every Monday. Now today I'm going to help you pick a subgenre of romance. So I have a list of 13 subgenres and I kind of put them in alphabetical order. Um, I say kind of because I thought of one afterwards that didn't quite fit, but let's start at the top. The first one is Chiclet. Now, now, Chiclet, I know some people might say it's dead. This is Bridget Jones, that whole era when that was so popular, but I'm pretty sure I checked ticket sales. And even the third, was it the third installment of Bridget Jones? People went to go see that. So if this is something you like, it is being disguised as, as sometimes contemporary romance, sometimes it's romantic comedies, people are changing the covers so they're no longer cartoony. Um, so you can still write Chiclet. You just have to make sure like all other romances, it has a happy ending because previously in the past, Chiclet did not always have a happy ending. Um, sometimes, well, you could, I guess you could define it as happy. The woman would just decide, I don't need that guy at all. Forget him. I'd rather be single, which was one of the biggest problems because then it's not really a romance because they have to be happily ever after together, whether that is her and him or her and another guy or her and another girl, it doesn't matter, but two people have to come together or a group of people. Love has to happen at the end. All right, the second subgenre is Christian inspirational. Sometimes these are separated. I put them together. Has anything to do with faith is a central key point of the plot. Sometimes like within there, I think there are different tropes where maybe she is very religious, but he is not. And then by coming together, uh, he sees that this is is a, he sees the light that this is the way things should be and then they can be together so you know I think if you are interested or thinking about this hopefully you've read this genre if not go ahead and go read it it's fine if you haven't just go ahead and explore it but the number one best author within this genre is my friend Jolene Navarro and I will leave a link to come, some of her books below but I think that's a great example of someone who has a really rich full story that has romance with inspirational built into it but not too much and there's nothing wrong I guess I shouldn't say too much inspirational but where it's just overpowered I think there's a good mix. So that's a good place to start to figure out whether or not you want to write within this subgenre. All right, third one is contemporary, which is what I do. That is more modern every day. There's no superhero, there's no paranormal. Basically, there's no other elements that you can find in some of the other genres. It is usually in a big city, not always, but it's present day, it's modern, it's realistic. Um, that's contemporary romance. It could be sweet, it could be steamy. Um, again, those are just heat levels, not subgenres. Uh, so if this is something that you like, you could obviously read my book. Um, but there are many contemporary romances out there. And this is the most popular subgenre right now on Amazon Kindle, according to the latest study by Kaylytics that came out in September 2018. So this is a good place to start. However, there is a lot of competition, just in case you're wondering if that's something maybe that is a big factor for you. Um, number four, number four is erotic romance. Now that is not to be confused with erotica, and I'll explain the difference in a minute, but erotic romance means that sex or sexual uh, feelings or activity or whatever is very central to the plot and the story and the characters couldn't develop without it. 
versus erotica, which is it doesn't necessarily have to have a plot. It could just be sex scenes written just to have sex scenes. Now, a huge erotic romance that we all know of recently is Fifty Shades. I really won't go into those details, but that would be a good place for you to start if that's something that you think you might be interested in writing. Now, the fifth one is historical, and historical is anything in the past like way, way past. I mean, I guess it could be the 1970s and we could call it historical, but traditionally when people think of historical, they think of 1800s, 1700s. Regency is very popular. That's basically the pre-Victorian. So I think it's 1805 to 1820, um, I think right before or during the War of Trafalgar. Then we go into Victorian ages. And so there, uh, within historical, there's even further subgenres inside there based on the time period that you're writing. That is, that is going to be your historical. Um, LGBT, and I'm sure I'm missing some acronym letters inside there, but rainbow romance. So anything same sex, transgender, anything to do with that, is going to fall in that category. Number seven is paranormal romance. Now, paranormal romance has uh, very close ties to science fiction and urban fantasy. And we'll talk about those in a minute, but paranormal typically has been associated with romance. It's not to say you can't have sci-fi romance, um, but paranormal usually means there's magical elements. The eighth one is romantic comedies, which we already talked about. And that is just something that's lighthearted and funny. Uh, typically they don't have a high heat level associated with them. That's not to say they can't, but that's it's just not usually paired together. Um, number nine is romantic suspense where somebody is in danger. Maybe there's a strong valiant hero coming in to save the day, like a Navy SEAL guy, like the ones my uh, co-writer Alana writes a ton of those. Um, and those are excellent. You could check those out. There are also ones where there's a killer on the loose and maybe she just stumbles upon a guy in a cabin and he's going to protect her, but they're wondering because the killer's out there. So that's romantic suspense or there's a mystery sort of element to the story. Um, but again, keep in mind, because these are romances, the mystery is not the main reason for the story. The romance is still central to the story, not the mystery. The next one is number 10, and that is science fiction. Now, the thing that makes something science fiction is usually it's futuristic, it has time travel, it doesn't have magical elements. So if you remember the TV show Fringe, Fringe was an excellent example of something that has um, science fiction based, but it is not based in uh, like hocus pocus, right? Or there's no supernatural elements. There was another really great TV show on Netflix called Altered Carbon. You have to see that. Like if you like this genre, Altered Carbon had, I think they, they said it was the most expensive TV show that they have ever produced. It costs millions of dollars to, to produce each episode. But there are actually, there was a small romantic element to it. It wasn't actually a romance story, but that is an excellent example of, in my opinion, of science fiction. Um, so sci-fi just means these are the elements that are within your romance, because remember we're talking romances, which means romance is the central theme and point of the story. Now, number 11 is urban fiction. Urban fiction very closely mirrors sci-fi and paranormal in that you'll, it's the ones with the covers where it's some tough chick who is wearing leather and boots and carrying daggers, or she has a sword sword um, or she's a witch. This is urban fantasy where she is like the alpha female. I shouldn't say alpha. She's not always alpha, but she's pretty tough. She can hold her own. She is like a tough chick with superpowers or maybe latent superpowers that she doesn't know about. And again, these aren't science fiction powers, although maybe she got them from a lab and these are, maybe there's a medical super uh, formula giving her lots of testosterone to make her strong, but typically it's because she is like Buffy the Vampire Slayer and she's the last one of her kind. This is usually urban fantasy. Um, number 12 is women's fiction. Now women's fiction is almost to be like literary fiction. Sometimes people have chiclet and they call that women's fiction. Uh, so that's kind of a gray area, but women's fiction, I'm not even sure if we consider that a romance anymore because with women's fiction, just like chiclet, sometimes there's not a happy ending. So if you want to write women's fiction, 
I should say, I don't know if it's still romance, but if you put a happy ending in there, it's kind of like romance. It usually, to me, it moves a little slower. Um, I'm not really interested in women's fiction, so I can't really speak to it that much, but I know it's still kind of, it's still out there. It's still kind of a romance um, subgenre, as long as it has a happy ending. And then number 13 is young adults. Now young adults is huge. It's so huge. There's so many different things inside there. So young adults, um, again, young adult, new adults, I kind of consider them almost the same. Young adult means 18 and under, typically people in high school. New adult is college or maybe right after college, you know, you're a new adult. Um, new adult kind of fell by the wayside, just like the uh, chiclet genre. I don't think a lot of people are buying it anymore. It was so hot like five years ago. It's so dead now. Um, so be careful if that's what you're writing. Young adult never seems to go out of style. And in fact, if you are on YouTube and you're looking at a lot of the big author tubers, I would say 90% of them write young adult. I don't know why that is. It just happens. I think people that are interested in reading YA are really big YouTubers, I'm guessing. I'm not really sure. In fact, because I like YouTube so much, I was like, maybe I should just write young adult just so I can have more people watching my channel. Just kidding kind of. All right. So young adult just has to do with ages, usually um, middle grade and anything younger than that. There's just no ro romance. They're too young. So let's recap from the beginning. So the first one is chiclet, which I said is kind of dead, but has been kind of disguised as other things, as long as you put a happy ending onto it. Second one is Christian inspirational. The third one is contemporary, which is what I write, modern day. The fourth is erotic romance, not to be confused with erotica. The fifth is historical, so it could be Regency, it could be Victorian, anything in the very, very, very past. Um, the sixth is LGBT. And the seventh is paranormal romance, where they have supernatural elements, like um, the TV show Supernatural would be a good example. And number Number eight is romantic comedies. And number nine is romantic suspense. My co-author Alana has some great books in there. Uh, there is some danger. There's a mystery element. Number 10 is science fiction, time travel, futuristic, uh, something like Altered Carbon or Fringe. And number 11 is urban fantasy like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And number 12 is women's fiction, which may or may not still be a romance subgenre. And 13 is young adult slash new adult. All right. I hope that kind of helped you pick within there one the first thing you want to do is write just cross off the things you don't want to write about the second thing you want to do is narrow it down to things that are interesting to you watch a ton of tv a ton of movies and read a bunch of books all within that subgenre and try to figure out what really sparks your creativity and gives you some new ideas that you want to start writing about. All right, leave a comment below. Let me know if I forgot any subgenres or which one you are most leaning towards. And I will talk to you guys next week.